Hey, what up, Fred? Hey, Bye, what's... man. Kendall Gill, what's the deal, man? Hey, hey, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. It's good to talk to you, man. You're one of the top hoopers, man, that, that come through the game. I know you average 20 a couple of years, so hey. you know, I had to call in tonight, Fred. Yeah, thank you. And I like to get perspectives. I like to get perspective from hoopers. So I'm one of those guys who, Kendall, who I appreciate the 90s game. I appreciate the 80s game. Mm-hmm. And tell me if I'm wrong. I think that the 80s, the 90 guys were more athletic than the 80s guys. And but the '80s guys had was a lot of had a lot of skill set, and they moved up and down the court pretty fast. So there was more possessions, higher scoring game. When you guys came in, it was more defensive, harder to score, less possessions. So you guys, your scores are maybe in the '90s and '80s most games in the playoffs. When you look at the two eras, right, mm-hmm. Kendall, and you looking at LeBron and you looking at a Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. So I've always been a Michael Jordan guy, but I'm starting to see this narrative change as the, the I guess, the, the 30 olds become in control of the media and they become, like like Fred is in his 30s, if I'm not mistaken, or 40s, early 40s. 40s, man. 40, 40s. okay, yeah, early 40s. <laughs> when those guys starting to come into, the, thir- the young 30 olds starting to come into control of the media, you're starting to hear LeBron more. Is this surprising to you that you're seeing that shift now in the LeBron and Jordan debate, whereas six to seven years ago, it was 95-5 Jordan, but now it's more 60-40. Is that surprising to you? That, no, it's not surprising at all to me. You know, I actually um, do the Bulls games here in Chicago, and my partner, Jason Golf, who uh, is the host of the show, um, is in that 30 range of what you're talking about. And we have this debate all the time. He's a LeBron guy. You know, and it's because LeBron is in his era. You know, that's all he's seen is LeBron. He said, oh, yeah, I, I, I grew up watching Michael, but he really started focusing on basketball like most 30-year-olds do uh, in the LeBron James era. But, you know, I say the way you separate the two is is this. Michael, you look at his numbers. Michael averaged 30 plus points per game his whole career mm. with hand yep. checking rules. Yep. Damn. Okay? Yep. With hand checking rules. LeBron is 20, LeBron is about 27 points a game without hand checking rules. Yeah. The game is a lot easier yep. to play today than it is than it was back in the 90s. Okay? And also, yep. you look at you look at LeBron and LeBron handles the basketball maybe 85% of the time during the game. Am I right? He has that ball about 85% of the time. The triangle offense was designed to take the ball out of Michael's hands. Okay? Mm. They put it in so he would share the basketball with everybody because he was so dominant. So Michael had the ball in his hands probably 28 28 to 30% of the time. Can you yeah. imagine what he would have done if he had the basketball 85% of the time? Like James Harden? No. Yeah, yeah that, like James Harden. Let me ask you something, Kendall. Let me ask you something real quick. And, and I'm sorry to cut you off. But uh, oh, no when you look at the players today, like I look at the players. I, I grew up watching the 90s players. I didn't really watch the 80s too much. My dad swear by them, but I go back and look at the highlights. When I watch the 90 players and I watch yeah. the players today, to me – you guys had – the game was tougher then because you were allowed to do more. Like you said, hand check. You, you were allowed to be more physical as, as smaller guards was coming into the paint. But today, with the way the kids train from an early age, to me, they seem more skillful. They seem like they have more skills. And, and as well as you see bigger guys doing more. Like you look at a Greek freak. You think about it. This guy could handle the ball. He could do a lot with the rock. And he's 6'11". You look at Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis could play center and he could play the two guard at times when he's on the wing knocking down mid-range jumpers. You look at a LeBron James, 6'9", 265, and, and could, could pass the ball like Magic, can, can dominate the game scoring like Michael Jordan, and he can just be a post player 
and just sit back in the post and play de- defense from one through four. So when I look at when I look at the game when you guys play, yeah, it was more scrappy. But now when I look at the game today, I'm like, man, these guys are freaks of nature. It's like they breed these guys. It's like, how do you get a Kawhi Leonard is considered small? I give you an example, uh, Kendall. I was listening to an Isaiah Thomas interview, and this is the last thing I'll say, and I'll let you take it from there. I was listening to Isaiah Thomas interview, and he said, you know, I, I was thinking Steph Curry was a small guy like me because he looked small on the court. And he was saying the first time he met Steph Curry, he said he didn't realize how big Steph was. He said Steph was like three or four inches taller than him and like maybe 15 to 20 pounds heavier. And so he said, man, these guys today, when you see them, they're huge and they're freaking nature athletes. Like they're jumping out the gym and it's crazy. So it's even though I'm a 90s guy, I still got Jordan as my number one candle. I still think we're a little too hard on the guys today because of the rules in the 90s. I don't think the game is easier today from what I see, but I do think that the skill set that you guys played, a, you guys was were allowed to play tougher, and these guys have to use more of their skill set. What do you think about that? And uh, I'm going to agree with you because you're the expert, so <laughs> I'm not going to go against you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, yo, man. Hey, listen, you, you, you're entitled to your opinion, man. That's so, all. Hey, I respect everybody's opinion, but um, you, you're right. I mean, the, the players today are a lot more skilled than they were when when I was in the league. Um, you know, simply because shoot, they start they start AAU basketball at the time when they're six, seven years old. You know, so they they they're working on their yep. skill level. I have a son who's yep. in eighth grade who's way more skilled than I ever was right now. You know. Mm. Uh, because that's all he works on, you know. But um, I do think that the players today, by the time they reach the pro level, I think that they have put so many miles on their legs. That's why you see all these ACL tears. And, that's uh, true. That's true. You know, that. they play they play way too much when they're little, man. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. why I won't make that mistake with my son. You know, because I'm not gonna let him play these AAU schedules where you're playing five and six games a day. And you're doing that year after year after year because sooner or later that's that's going to take a toll on you. I mean, you look at Markel Folk the other day. Yep. You know, the kid kid just started playing well. Just again. got started, man. Damn, just I just started like, playing well look again. At, and then, look at Clay Thompson. Look at Clay Thompson back to back. Thompson. ACL injuries. Back to back. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, you know, then, so, no, no, so, you're right. I so agree with you. I agree with you there. Nigga, hang so up the they phone. Play, so they play way too much. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they, <laughs> so they play way too much. But, uh-huh. um, you know, but I do think that the league is 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 easy now. You know, yeah, as a matter of fact, if you can't if you can't average if you can't average twenty a game now, man, something is, <laughs> something is wrong, dog. Because right. you can't touch the guys. Uh huh. And they let you travel. I was gonna get to that. Yeah, I know. We I, left with I, that last I, time. I seen that James Harden step. Back. Yeah, I seen that James Harden step back so many times, man. And you know, a lot of uh, about three or four of the refs uh, in the league live here in Chicago, and they're part mm-hmm. of my sixty forty club. Mm-hmm. And we go back and forth for all this. They say it's the gather step. I'm like, you're not gonna convince me at all. I'm a basketball purist. That mm-hmm. is a travel. I was like, but y'all go ahead. You let them do it. The league wants to promote scoring. And mm-hmm. back when. My my last couple of years in the league, they were leaning towards doing this because they wanted more viewership. And the way you get more viewership more is points. to have more scoring, you know, mm-hmm. and prettier plays. I mean, Steve Nash, great player, two time MVP, right? <clears throat> Did where was Steve Nash before they took them hand checking rules out? Mm. You know why? He would dribble yeah. all the way through the lane. He would dribble all the way through the lane. Come out, Amari Sadamari, come here. Come here, Amari. Come save yeah. me. <laughs> that's because you. That's because you couldn't yeah. touch him. You know. Right. But if you put this right. but if you put this forearm on, if you put this forearm on him, he ain't gonna be doing all that dribbling and stuff. Right. You know, right. And, and 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 that's the difference. So, you know, the game is more entertaining now because of the moves and all of the step backs that they they mm-hmm. they added. But but it's it's easy, you know. And and the athletes are bigger, stronger. I mean, it's it's evolution. You know, right. things are gonna happen. You know. Right. Yeah. We got a question from Terrence Bailey. What's your thoughts on Charles Smith, star point guard from Georgetown, who ran into trouble with the law after being drafted by Boston? Um, 
it was unfortunate. And if you do get in trouble um, with anything like that, it, it, it becomes a stigma and it attaches itself to you all throughout your career. So, you know, it's, it's best to not to try your best not to get in trouble, man. You know, right. and before we we're drafted and all that, they, they've sent private investigators to see what you do, see what you about, wow. know your, you know, know all of your moves and everything. So, you know, the teams know what you, what you all about before you get into it, you know, and I thought Charles was a great player at Georgetown. You know, uh, really entertaining. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, he got in a little trouble and he didn't really have a real long NBA career. But, you know, he still made it. You know what I mean? He made it. He made it. Yeah. All right. We got a call. 267. What's up? What's up, Fred? Hey, what's up? How you feel? Hey, I'm chilling. Calling out of Philly. How you doing, Mr. Gill? Hey, man. What's happening? 